do that. Okay, everybody. And thank you very much for joining our Plant Records webinar on the 7th of October, 2021. Uh, so today's topic is healthy plant records. Are they achievable? Uh, together with me, uh, we have Dr. Wahid Arsad. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you all again. And also Greg Payton from the Dorsa Arboretum. Welcome all. I'm uh, proud to be here. Great. Uh, yes. So, so uh, the reason we picked this topic is that we've had a quite a lot of uh, discussions about um, uh, sort of the topics that assumes that the data quality is in place already. Uh, like value scoring, that was a very popular topic that we uh, talked about a few webinars ago, and and uh, and then we realized that. Uh, the premise for some of these techniques and, and, and are, are, are that you have healthy plant records. And then we started to dig into the question of what are healthy plant records and what, what do people think about this topic? Um, and so, so what we want to do today is basically see if we can create some common understanding about what people think, uh, what, what they define as healthy plant records or healthy data really. And, and also talk about techniques of how this can be improved and then, uh, yeah, so there's a, there will be a breakout session. There will be some uh, uh, cloud uh, sort of, um, uh, we're going to do a um, word cloud together as well. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go through this session together. So uh, maybe then I'll hand over to Wahid, who could talk a bit about the backbone of the Botanic Garden. Yeah, thanks, Havard. Yeah, so um, as, as you're fairly familiar with, kind of the workings of a botanic garden, uh, depending on your mission, of course, um, there are several key components of that. You've got your vision um, and, and your mission, which are very closely linked. And of course, the collection policy, which guides what you have in your garden and the documentation for that. And in order to have a, a, a healthy plant record system, which we're gonna come on to throughout this talk, it's so important that the organization and the storage of that data is systematized because no matter how accurate and noteworthy that data might be, it's quite ineffective unless there is a structure and a, a kind of backbone to that. And here we've kind of summarized the inner workings of, of, a, of a garden based around its plant records and how important they are in order to be able to make decisions, whether that's tracking, analyzing, planning, assessing the significance and quality of the collection, all of that is centered around the, the, the plant records. And this is not a random exercise, uh, keeping information up to date and accurate, we all know is, is, is not easy. And it requires a lot of thought out prioritization and a lot of foresight, um, as well as kind of an in-depth knowledge of how your institution works. And the, the key point here is that as we evolve, um, kind of what, what we're doing with our plant records, ultimately they're at the heart of the garden. And all gardens, all industries are becoming very data driven now. I'm sure you'll all appreciate that. So in order to make those effective, effective in terms of plant records and, and making them kind of best, the best use from those, the data has to be kept accurate and up to date, orderly and systematized. And some of those topics we're gonna to come on to today. Yeah, uh, I could also add the, I suppose many of you are familiar with the definition of a botanic garden. It's like a recorded collection of plants, the word recorded. So if you don't have good records, it's eventually the word botanic disappears and you just have a garden. So, so that's sort of a, a part of the story here as well. You, you can say you have plant records, but if the quality is really poor, then yeah, it becomes more of a garden and less of a botanic garden, which could be nice, but not necessarily the purpose of what you're trying to achieve. Brilliant. Yeah. And this, again, um, is, is kind of a future vision, if you like, of, of that data driven world and business that uh, operates within a botanic garden. And again, like I, like I mentioned, in order to 
to make effective use of those plant records, they have to be kept up to date. And this is kind of a future vision of how that might work. Havard, did you want to add something else? Yeah, yeah. Well, the only thing I want to say is that uh, uh, the, the, this is sort of a trend in many other industries that the, the, I, don't, I hate to use that word, but the winners are, are, are the institutions or that have that really knows their, their business really well. And in our business, it's knowing our collection, knowing and being able to do the right thing with it, whether that is from a collection management perspective, visitation perspective. So, so the key point I suppose this is trying to tell us is that the future is to, to really have good data so you can make good decisions uh, about your, the, the workings of your institution. Um, and that, that we see is a clear trend in it all, all walks of life really. And, and the technologies we have available to us make this possible. So, so uh, but as we know, we're dealing with living creatures, not just boring their data. So, so that creates a number of extra challenges that many other industries don't have. So, so uh, uh, that's why this topic is a bit more, there's a different spin on it in our, our, our industry. So uh, we're gonna do a small uh, word cloud with Mentimeter. So we're gonna, in the chat function, you will see there is a, uh, you can either use your mobile if you like, if you scan the barcode you see here, or you could, uh, in the chat, you will see there is a link that will bring your browser up to a Mentimeter. And, and then uh, if you then, so the question is, what does a healthy plant record system means to you? Uh, and let's see if I can uh, quickly bring up the, uh, the Mentimeter here so we can see the, so if you then, if anybody has difficulties to see the chat, I'm now, of course, don't have the barcode anymore. So if you weren't quick enough, I can pop back to that if anybody wants to. So you got, you got three, uh, three, three words you can put in separately. One word at a time, hopefully, but you can also put uh, two words or, so here we go. Accurate, accuracy, accessibility, comprehensive, complete, stability. Activity, easy of use, detailed, flexible. It's, uh, I think we'll let it run for 30, 60 more seconds, maybe. Or see if there's any, until we don't get any more action. Comprehensive, but accurate seems to be the, the, the obvious. Uh, uh, but accessible is interesting as well. Um, I think we just have a couple more joining the uh, Mentimeter, so. But yeah, okay. Give a minute or so. Somebody mis misspelled accurate, or is it accurate? That's what I'm not sure about. It's, a, it's an interesting pun as well, if it was a misspelling. But, uh, is that a word, Greg? Accurate? You're on mute. We had a couple mean. more through the chat as well. Consistent and having the same meaning for all the fields of one program. Yeah. So you can see the, okay. So I think that, um, so we'll, we'll share this. So as always, we will write up a blog article about the, 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 the webinar. So you get all the this word cloud and all the other discussions and some links to the things we we talk about as well. Uh, we have some background uh, research on some of these topics we bring up. So so we get that back to you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Then we'll go back to the slides. So um, I think uh, so. So there is a. Uh, there are different definitions of what is considered healthy data, but this is 
quite a classic one. And I think it is quite a comprehensive sort of definition of five key elements that define good records. And this can be applied obviously to plant records as well. Uh, and uh, I think they're reasonably self-explanatory, but I, I'll go through them. I know it's a bit boring to listen to if somebody reading off a slide, but uh, so completeness, uh, yeah, how comprehensive is the information you have? You know, if you have just one coordinate of two, then it's definitely not complete. Even though the one might be right, you have just the longitude, but then it doesn't really help you. Um, so reliability is quite an interesting one because that comes up very often. You know, you might have information that looks right, but what is the source? Uh, maybe you got it from a, a name list online that has not been updated for 20 years. Still data, but it might not be accurate. Uh, so it, it, it might be accurate in some form, but it's not reliable. Uh, relevance, I think that is the classic that uh, was also talked a lot about at the Bump Network uh, meeting yesterday, that uh, uh, people uh, might spend time on recording information that is really not relevant. Uh, and and uh, to just repeat that topic of mission-driven recording of data, you might say, you know the reason why you record this information. That is very useful as a as an institution having maybe looking at having a record keeping policy or something like that to, to guide staff to make sure they record relevant information. And, and that can also be tricky as so you, you get focused on things that are not relevant, but you miss the relevant bit. That's even, even uh, more sort of upsetting, you might say. And the last one is timeliness, uh, which we're gonna talk a bit about later as well. Uh, how up to date is the information? That becomes extra important then, obviously, when you're dealing with a living collection in particular. Uh, so a plant might have been recorded alive, but it was, you know, it died two days later. So uh, that, that, that's a challenge. Uh, now, these are sort of considered the basics of, of so if you get all those five tick boxes uh, checked off and everything is, up, is in brilliant shape, then what we consider, if you look at the healthy plant records as a more comprehensive uh, data set, then uh, you can also then go one step further. And is your data interoperable? Meaning, can your data be used in other contexts? So that, that really uh, is also a big question you should ask yourself, because if it can't, then you, you sort of could argue that maybe your records aren't as healthy as they should be. Uh, that, that's an arguable discussion. That's a discussion one might have. But I, I think that's a, that's a very fair point because uh, when you have made, spent all this effort, obviously you want to get the benefit out of it as well. Um, and, and here we've stolen or used a word that's used in medical industry, which is called, which is hard to pronounce, especially for me, a longitudinality. Uh, which refers to things measured over time. They use that when they measure, uh, you do research on patient health or something. But that word really applies to plants as well, I feel. Uh, plants are not people, but they live over a time, a period of time. And you might have, and, and that, that I think is uh, also very important if you're gonna do analytics and, and look at how you, you progress as an institution with your records, uh, you know, are they, correct today, that might be the case. But do you have the data to see how they compare to how it was a week ago or a month ago? So that, that really adds a second dimension to the usefulness of all the effort you put in. So that's the second question you could sort of use as a metric, you might say, for the healthiness of your records. Um, and uh, I remember maybe I should, with Greg, we did some value scoring uh, with your data set as, as, as a sample. And, and you could see there maybe the longitudinality question. I didn't, don't repeat my pronunciation, but that, <laughs> that became a bit sort of vaguer the further back you went naturally. Yeah, I would say uh, longitudinality, like the longitudes of the vertical measurement. But uh, um, yeah, you know, we had uh, very inconsistent data early on, and I've spent a long part of my career here trying to ensure that uh, uh, all the bits of data that we have you know, tucked away in various locations are incorporated so that we can have one-stop shopping for data. Uh, and that uh, certainly helps to uh, uh, increase the 
value and then the ability to evaluate data over the uh, periods of time. Yep, yep. Uh, the, the, the other thing I also think is quite useful if you can is to take the same data set and look at it multiple times over time and you get the same answer. Quite a, that, that's quite a tricky thing to achieve, uh, but, but uh, that's hopefully how a healthy data set should behave. Um, the last thing is also standardized. Uh, you could argue that interoperable and standardized are two similar overlapping things, but they're not necessarily the same. Um, and, and that again is the question of healthiness and that if it's standardized, it can be then used in, in, uh, with beyond your own personal or institutional needs which is uh, like comparison and for analytics, et cetera. I'm, I don't see if there's any chat, so I should check for the chat or questions. But uh, if there are any questions, if you have any questions during our talk, please raise your hand or put in the chat or just open your mic. That's fine. We, Yeah. So, um, OK. Uh, let's see. So uh, opportunities to be data-driven. So Wahid's going to talk a bit about uh, how that can impact you on an institutional level and on a smaller record-keeping level, you might say. Yeah, thanks, Havard. Yeah, so we were sort of <clears throat> looking at what the impacts of a healthy plant record system is for an institution and how the wealth of opportunities that it can open up uh, for gardens to really utilize their data um, for lots of things, and and these th these impact these have impacts on a lot of processes um, that that affect the whole institution as well as day to day processes as well. And here is a list of a few of the ones that we came up with together. And at the institutional level, of course, and this is at the, the highest level, they impact the vision and the mission outcomes. So we touched on that at the very beginning. That underpins the whole reason for a botanic garden's existence. So it's being able to deliver those vision and mission outcomes. Then with a healthy plant record system, your data can become a lot more shareable. Uh, that may be within your own institution, but also externally through these collection repositories. And here are a couple of examples of those, uh, which several of you will be familiar with. And that's the BGCI's plant search, uh, and also GBIF, so both of those are really requiring high quality data and without a healthy plant record system, being able to contribute there is, is challenging. Then you have the public element as well. So in terms of, for example, um, visitors to your garden or even interpretation, having a, a, a record system that's up to date means that it could even be publicly accessible and searchable and the opportunities that that will open up as well are, are huge. And related to that, um, those opportunities are through collaboration. And again, that could be nationally or even internationally, and the potential those collaborative efforts have for grants and funding opportunities as well. So the whole institution it has quite a lot of benefits. And when you think on like a, an everyday level um there's so many i mean this this list is not exhaustive and i'm sure you all can think of even more reasons why this is so useful but uh, things like material requests so when when uh, a request comes through you can process that more efficiently so you can really churn through some of those requests that, that are coming through and not only can you process the request you can actually locate your accession and material quickly so it's, i think somebody mentioned that in the word cloud the word being efficient uh, as part of that process and not only can you locate that uh, material you actually have a better grasp of its condition so i'm sure many of you have um, situations where you've you might have had a request and you've gone to find the material and it might not be in the right form or the right condition that's that's been requested and a, a system that's up to date will definitely help in that regard then there's the question of taxonomic verification and uh, especially in the in the face of a, a changing world of taxonomy and synonymy with nomenclature um, having up-to-date labels 
it's all very closely interlinked. Ultimately, uh, the last point there, we have data analytics. So ultimately, with a, a, a measurably richer database, you, you have more images, more supporting information to enhance its use. And all of that can really guide the, the, the insights that you can get from your data um, and, and how that um, has, has a kind of benefit um, on some of the other things that we talked about. So uh, in, an, in an ideal world, um, these are really exciting opportunities and these can only come through a healthy plant record system. So, um, yeah. One comment on the label question, I was reminded of, but that in the, quite recently in that the knowledge about what is on the label itself is also data. You know, sometimes you, you print a label and then then their name changes and then you, you have a, lost the track of what you actually printed. So you get discrepancies there and that discrepancy is also data and that's also data quality in a way. So there's certain sort of gaps where, where I still feel like um, there's a potential for systems to be more dynamic as it were to, to, to be able to help you to create the data quality uh, or the data quality will inform you to make the right decisions. That's the word, not the other way around. So, so yeah, it's just one example of what do you record and what does the system give you of information? Um, yeah. Then, okay. And dealing with stale data, that's a, uh, that fish down there is uh, quite a good example of what happens with data if it's not looked after. Um, and uh, I think that's a classic problem in, in many, for many institutions, because uh, if you ask people, uh, we've had that several times before, what are you struggling with? And time is like the, <laughs> how much, we don't have enough time to do all the things we want to do. And that goes for hot stuff as well, to some degree. Well, probably just as much in that they don't, they, there's more to be done. So, so uh, in that context, we really appreciate that you have time to join us. That's really a great uh, compliment and that we hopefully make that time useful. Um, but uh, so, so uh, just keeping that in mind and, and that is probably a very significant part. So, so I put in the point here about the value scoring uh, concept that we're looking at as well, where data quality and, and, and stale data must also reflect the the scoring model, we think. We see that clearly. So if you have a plant that you, or, or a taxa that you consider extremely valuable and you have five plants of that, and those are given some metrics because they're really important for your mission, but neither of them have been checked for the last five years, that should reflect the total score. Uh, so meaning the system should inform you that, hello, here's something you really should look at. A bit like your app telling you that your parking meters run over or something you know that that kind of dynamic is what we need to really achieve to get to help you to to curate not only the collection but basically it's data curation that's what it is it's a similar challenge for the hort staff to look after their plants your or those who look after the records it's it's a challenge to look after that and there are tools or sometimes there isn't tools and that's what we're going to talk a bit about maybe there are some tools that have yet to be invented to make this job much easier or easier uh, or less difficult, less maybe that's the more appropriate word. Um, so uh, we're going to now spin off into some uh, breakout rooms. Uh, we're going to have five rooms. So uh, there will be a link to a shared Miro board. Uh, so if uh, you could click on that, it's very interactive. So everybody could go in there and put in their notes, but you will be then told which room you're in. So we're going to have five rooms. There's going to be five people in each room, roughly. Uh, so, and we're going to have, let's look at the time, we're going to have 12 minutes. So there are two questions. What techniques do you use today to ensure data quality? Uh, so share that with each other. And are there any data quality metrics you would like to measure that you are not able to do today? Uh, and uh, then when we come back, if you can assign one volunteer, as it were, who can report back to the room. Uh, and then by we're having a shared whiteboard, we can also then have the uh, uh, notes already for us when we go back to the session. Okay, then we'll see each other in 12 minutes. We're all back and uh, 
I know this uh, it's always a bit of short time for this. It's a bit of a scramble. And I understood some people had problems with the, the whiteboard, but we see that there were some notes finally ended up there. So that's really brilliant. Um, okay, so uh, we thought we'd then go through the uh, comments each room has made. And then I almost tempted to go in random order because it's a bit more fun that way. So people, uh, so maybe we should start with um, room number four. I'll, I'll share my screen here so everybody could see the, the notes from room number four, um, which is here. And then in that room, um, so can everybody see this? So what techniques do you use today to ensure data quality? And are there data quality metrics you would like to measure that you're not able to do? Um, so I don't know if anybody from room number four has, have you already picked a volunteer or shall we help you? <laughs> let, me, let me start, have a, um, yeah, so hi, hi everyone. I'm, um, I'm George Hancock. I, um, I actually work for Candide, but it's on the, um, another side of our business that does uh, ticketing for gardens. And I joined today um, really to kind of listen in and, and understand um, some of the work that Havard and, and Wahid are doing. Um, but I and, uh, ended up being allocated in room four and, um, had a few challenges because um, I think Mike, Mike was driving and um, Eva was on her phone. So I, I uh, noted down a few things on their behalf. Um, so I'm, I, I, I'm happy to make a start and, and uh, discuss those. Um, and uh, bear in mind, I've got very limited and, um, knowledge of some of the other software solutions that are out there. So uh, Florio and Iris. Um, but um, yeah, Eva, Eva mentioned um, that uh, she's based in Iceland and um, she has um, a large number of her plants uh, won't survive the winter potentially. So she will um, do a, a planting um, in, the, in the summer and then um, effectively she does an audit each year. So based on um, her new planting, she will go out and check them first in the following year because because um, obviously the survival rates for those are, are less likely than the established plants in her garden. Um, and then um, we were also talking about um, the way that um, paper records um, are used um, and then subsequently entered into the database. And um, they're also um, retained for a long period of, of time um, so that they've, they're always there for as a, as a point of reference, essentially. And then some of the, um, uh, the, the participants in our group are using uh, other software solutions which define a a structure to the data as well. So that, that uh, intrinsically um, provides some level of quality in terms of naming conventions or, or a structure to the data. Yeah, that's really brilliant. I, I think that's actually a good idea to have a moderator that doesn't come from the same, you get a different angle on it, different twists on it. That was really- I think it's probably yeah. helpful for Myro as well, because uh, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure uh, you know, it's not the most intuitive thing if you've never used it before and um, yeah. So. Yeah, okay. happy to happy to participate. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, did you get any time to talk about metrics that you uh, that would you like to measure? We we didn't. Um, I'm I'm not sure that it, I think depending on um, who it was sort of contributing in our group that actually it's sort of limited in terms of um, yeah the the kind of metrics that are captured currently. So. Um, yeah, we, we didn't kind of get onto that subject. No, no, no but that's, uh, I, I uh, yeah, the, the ensuring quality is of course to do inventory. That, that, that's a very good, good standard. But if you, I was gonna see if you're lucky enough to know that it, most of the things happen during one particular part of the season. I wouldn't call that lucky, but at least makes it easier to organize uh, the inventory, point of inventory. So thank you very much, George, that's brilliant. Uh, so, uh, I will move over to breakout room number three then, please. Well, I'll uh, start, but we could certainly have some other. I was here with uh, Pete and uh, uh, Don and uh, was it Michael, I think. Uh, so two from uh, Europe and two from the US, but uh, we uh, spent the first uh, half just you know, realizing that he, that you had to zoom out of the uh, the Hemiro board far enough to see that you actually had the questions and boxes ready for us. Uh, so that was the, so you know we started discussing uh, topics before we uh, realized we could really start uh, adding some post-its here. But uh, um, 
you know, we talked about ensuring data quality, uh, uh, you, know, you know, using off seasons, if there's such a thing, time when there is time to sit around and review records to uh, uh, go through taxonomy. Um, you know, we have inventories planned for certain, uh, certain amounts of plants being checked at different parts of the year. So, you know, using um, timing and schedules to go through um, uh, things that need to be looked at and refreshed. Um, and that goes to the, uh, the, uh, the quality we'd like to measure. Uh, I mean, understanding how frequently data are being changed to know that things are becoming stale. So that's uh, a point that I think would be helpful, you know, knowing uh, that there's been a, a lot of changes to this, to this particular garden area. Um, you know, if you had a shared taxonomy system like we've talked about to, to know that their uh, data have been updated um, in taxonomy, for example, that it's uh, flags it that it's time to review these names. Um, uh, I added a, I mean, a couple of notes here while the uh, first person was talking because I was trying to get some more, <laughs> some more down here. But, uh, you know, we also at Dawes uh, uh, keep our new plantings on a uh, schedule that for the first three years, they get reviewed yearly uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, young trees have uh, a proper um, start and their growth pattern. Um, you know, tall growing trees should be uh, be encouraged to have a good central leader and things like that. So uh, using a different inventory process than existing plants might might have is something we we, we try to do so that uh, it's not data quality, but it's actually tree quality and ensuring that the plant is surviving, that it's in a, a good location that uh, it seems to be thriving in. And then uh, jokingly, my last note on like to measure, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so you're looking for some, I, do you, I feel, do you feel lucky button where you sort of get some numbers that this is uh, some, uh, some artificial intelligence or data quality? That's yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. I mean, yeah. If, you know, if, if there was a system to tell us, this is something we should be looking at based on, yeah. and this sort, sort of led into part of the discussion we had as well about how, you know, uh, each garden, you know, tends to be an island when it comes to their own data. Yeah. And uh, having an opportunity to, uh, uh, so if say one garden, say Don and, uh, uh, or uh, Pete had a, a cultivar of a tree that they verified true to name, they're positive, it's, it is what it is, uh, share with the community as a whole how they came to that, uh, the, the uh, determination. Uh, if they could share a voucher that, or uh, photographs that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, the other gardens could use to, to compare their plant to, to say that uh, based on the research done by uh, so-and-so, uh, our tree matches this description, you know, so share, you know, shared information is always, always a goal. That's a very interesting, I, I've, I'm not a taxonomist by, by any stretch, but that idea of having distant verification processes, if mm -hmm. that would be like in this COVID era, but also in this era of, specialization and globalization or whatever, being able to pull in resources from afar to help you with this. That's mm -hmm. a very interesting uh, idea, I feel. Uh, when, whether yeah. it's possible, it's not for me to decide, but it would be interesting to explore at least. Even conceivably, if you could do, you know, you can do Zoom out in the field, you could have uh, somebody on a camera on your phone and then walk around the tree and then zoom into the foliage and stand back and look at it. And they'll, they'll say, show me the back of the leaf or something like that. And you could, you know, try to, have a uh, assertion of the plant from afar. <laughs> now we're talking. Oh, that's a cool feature. Yeah. And I think there, there is, um, I mean, if you look at some software like iNaturalist, that already does a similar sort of thing where you, you, you publish a picture or some yeah. pictures and, and allow the kind of community to, um, to do the, help out with the identification. Yeah. So yep. we're looking at the existing apps and, and, uh, and uh, communities like that would certainly be helpful. Yeah, yeah. I tried that out with a newt in my own garden and it worked quite well, yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> came through, some sort of bought in it. No, not the, uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's great. Uh, thank you very much. Any, any other comments to that from that group? Looking at time. Nope. It's really helpful.
Great. Uh, so let's do breakout number one for the, just to be a bit random. So I'm not sure who's in that group. Ben, Dave, Loana, Mar, Peggy, and Peter. Um, I'm happy to talk if that's okay. Uh, so one of the, um, uh, on the first question, what techniques do you use today to ensure data quality? One of the answers was Pete Atkinson, which I thought was a great answer. Uh, <laughs> so, um, how did I end up in this? Uh, one of your colleagues. <laughs> so um, we, we, we um, as like everyone else, I think we sort of uh, spent the first few minutes trying to work out what to do. But anyway, um, so uh, from an Edinburgh point of view, we use World Flora Online as our uh, sort of the taxonomic backbone. Uh, Plants of the World is also another crossover. Um, I think everyone uses on-site expertise. Um, we put restrictions uh, on the accession, i.e., uh, you know, sharing of information or how it can be used. Um, uh, Pete will probably be able to add a little bit more to that than, than I can. Um, then uh, one of the team, I think Cambridge, do an annual stock, stock take, which is sort of walking rapidly through the garden, noting um, labels missing, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, and up there sending taxonomy, uh, their taxonomy to BTCI monthly. And then uh, also the Hort teams maintain the data at the gardens. So it's entirely with, uh, on the Hort team side to manage the database through um, through mobile technology. Um, so uh, they can update on the spot. Uh, so quality, uh, data quality metrics we'd like to, to measure. Um, plants in and out, quick, um, you know, be able to see that quickly. Uh, multiple location check. Um, so that situation where you looking at a, a specimen in a, in a garden bed, it's looking pretty shabby uh, and you just want to be able to quickly know uh, if that's the only one or how many others there are across the collections, because it could be across multiple gardens potentially. Um, so when, um, uh, when a plant is noted as being in poor condition, it generates a, um, uh, a message that to the nursery perhaps or, or flags it that it will need propagation, um, or is it the last one? which I suppose relates to the multiple location check. Uh, automatic taxonomy updates. Um, so uh, name changes um, are um, noted and um, can be updated uh, and uh, updated and accepted. Uh, and also um, when a label's broken, it sends a message to replace it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's interesting if you can get that, yeah. I love the word propping, it's like, the Propping up is that from the same? Oh, it's just a, a propagation. It needs, yeah, needs it, to be propagated. Exactly, but uh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, uh, I don't know whether it's the right spelling or not. I have no idea. <laughs> the the Hortz team thing is is also I I like that idea a lot, and I think what I was wondering about we were thinking about having that as poll we did this. Uh, who who sort of who do, do so when you have Hortz stuff, they obviously feel a sense of ownership about their bed or maybe even their plants that they look after, as it were, uh, and who is, is the same relate to the related data? Who, who is looking after the data about that plant? And who is sort of, who owns that data that sort of, I'm responsible to keep that up. I suppose that in some gardens is typically the plant records officer kind of, but uh, does anybody have that sense that there's actually the hot stuff that's supposed to look after it? It's their responsibility? I think Mark can answer that because uh, that was her contribution for a past chat. Well, um, Pete Atkinson can as well. In in Cambridge, is hot who does the day to day record keeping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's really cool. Yeah. But uh, you know, then you cut out the or the it's straight to source, as it were, yeah. uh, on, on, on actually the half. Uh, yeah. Pete. Yeah. I mean, what what we're trying to always trying to do is kind of minimise the. The, the, the separation out between the plants, the horticulturalists, and the data that yep. link them together. So we need, you know, the horticulturalists are the people seeing the plants on the ground and moving them around. So try and get this, you know, get that culture there that um, they move something, you update it, and you give them the tool, hopefully give them the tool to do that. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Yes, yeah, the same here in Wales. And it's just getting them to recognize that the data is as important as the actual physical plant itself. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the, the story, isn't it? Without the accurate data, you, you mm. have half the story is only done. Uh, we're running a bit short of time, but I suppose quite a few things are repeated here, but can we quickly hear from group number two, please? Yeah, I'll be very brief. Um, there were a couple of interesting points. Um, some of it is a manual process, so sometimes you just have to have multiple eyes and many reviewers looking through um, for example, previously recorded paperwork before it gets digitized, and then having some periodic reviews of your inventory uh, and also having some accountability uh, with that regard. Um, and then data quality metrics um, related to name changes, especially when transitioning to new databases, conservation statuses. So when things change, um, being able to um, know what to update, with and then how that can be automated as well through things like notifications, for example, um, and a couple of other things related to stale data, for example, how thing, how long have things last been inventoried um, and mapping as well. So how many have been mapped or yet to be mapped um, and some of the metrics that you can derive from those. Yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. I think this whole idea about name changes is like a universal problem. And uh, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned with our blog article, what we'll do is we'll explore some of these these ideas as well in the article to see, maybe discuss a bit about what might be done in the future about this. Uh, for the last group, uh, we have group number five. Uh, I don't know if anybody from that group are available to comment. Um, hi, everyone. That was our group. Um, thanks to Elaine. We were also one of the groups that were like, how do we find where we're putting our questions in? So we did start talking about a lot of stuff. Um, for the mo for most of us, it's a single person putting in that data, you know, from the vendor information and everything. So that's how Smithsonian Gardens does quality control. Everything is sent to me and then I review everything and then I put it in. Um, but for Elaine, she was saying it's her and two other manager type positions that can do all of the accessioning and everything and there's discrepancies between the entries in the field so we talked a lot about creating a manual or workflows that was like this is the type of information that goes in this field this is the way that you format it um and doing stuff like that we didn't really even get to talk about the second question <laughs> we were mostly just talking um about yeah, creating some, she she had mentioned BG Base had some sort of like F1 key that you could pull up everything and it would have all this information. And so that's what she's trying to develop with her team so that they're putting in all the same stuff. And Is that uh, maybe, could it be interpreted as a, like a record keeping policy kind of document? Is that? Yeah, like? yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I believe Daniel had mentioned something about like a lot of the information is just with him. So yeah, just trying to document stuff. So that way, if we have people come into the team, it doesn't just have to be on the plant recorder and they know exactly how to do it. And it's standardized, I guess, is what our goal is with that. I don't know if anybody else wanted to contribute. Elaine has a comment. Hello, Elaine. I, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but we are working on a manual field by field by field. Some we don't use and we're saying we don't use it some it's it, we're just trying to be consistent and uh the director here uh said when we're finished we're gonna sell it to iris <laughs> exactly yeah so if it, i don't know no i i see what you want here or i'm guessing but i'll, I'll put that in the, the article i think the idea of being, getting assistance on what you should fill out and what you shouldn't fill out is is probably quite a, yeah. I mean, as, a, I, as, a, as a tool or yeah um, i think that also went along with um sharing the data between gardens so that you know we know if we're going to share this field we can we can compare that data because we know we're putting the same stuff in there yeah yeah uh pete you had something yeah no I was, I was just going to add, add to it really just from the, having worked a long time with bg base and, and iris and various things 
but uh, the actual the F1, the health fields in IRA, in BG base, I thought were really a very strong function within it because it did it did encourage data consistency. And you always have this issue of if people leave and move and change, you want to make sure the data which goes in each field is consistent. And I think that's a really you know powerful it was a powerful tool. All the BG base ex BG base users are nodding in the background there. So anyhow, that's it. Oh, that's really brilliant. Uh, I think uh, that was, you know, I this was really really interesting stuff. Uh, as I say, we we try to we'll we'll we're conscious of time. We should round off now, but we'll we'll summarize some of these thoughts in our article. Uh, I'll let me bring back the slides again, if I may. So um, yeah, so to summarize the whole idea and healthy plant records, uh, we did uh, talk about the five sort of fundamentals uh, that. That you can say defines uh, a healthy plant record. So it's five, and then some of those things. If you have those in place, you can then move one step beyond that. And basically, get your plant records uh, and make them alive and more useful, and get your basically return of all the effort. Uh, so, so I think we're going to talk more about this in the upcoming webinars, but especially uh, now in the upcoming article. So, so that's really, really useful uh, and really helpful. Uh, discussions we had today. Um, so thank you very much for joining everybody. Uh, and uh, we'll send out invites as usual uh, for the next one. We're not sure about the topic. If you have any comments or questions about or suggestions of what you want to hear from us, please send that to us by email or any other type of communication. So thank you all for coming.